Welcome to Better View. In this video, I am going to talk about anatomy of lungs of ox, dog, horse and pig. Lungs are paired organ of respiration located in the thoracic cavity separated by the mediastinum. They are covered by visceral layer of pleura except at the hilus. Each lung is conical having lobes divided by fissure. So this is the general description of lungs. The important point here being that they are located in the thoracic cavity separated by the mediastinum. So left lung, right lung, this is the wall of the thoracic cavity and space between the left and right lungs is called the mediastinum. Then let us talk about surfaces. So there are three surfaces. Uh, first one is the lateral surface also called the coastal surface. Okay. And it has costal impression. It is convex, smooth and has costal impressions due to ribs and cartilages. Okay. The second surface is the medial surface also called the mediastinal surface because it faces the mediastinum. It is related to the structures in mediastinum and due to those structures, it has some impressions. Okay. So first is hyalus. It is present above and behind the cardiac notch. Hyalus is the point where the pulmonary artery will enter into the lungs while the pulmonary vein will exit the lungs. Okay. Second thing is cardiac impression. It is present in both right and left lungs, but in case of left lung, it is much larger. Okay. So what is cardiac impression? It is a deep concave area which lodges the heart. Here in this diagram, you can see this area right here is called the cardiac impression. Then we have tracheal impression in right lung which extends cranially from hilum to the apex. Then vena cable impression uh, which is for abdominal vena cava. It is also present in case of right lung and it is present between the accessory and the diaphragmatic lobes. Okay. Then we have groove for aorta called sulcus aorta. It is present in left lung and groove for esophagus present in both lungs. In case of sulcus aorta in right lung we have groove for the vena azygus. Okay. In the right lung, we have tracheal impression, vena cable impression, esophagus, uh, esophageal impression and groove for vena azygus. In case of left lung, of course, we have cardiac impression. Other than that, we have groove for aorta and groove for esophagus. Groove of aorta is also called sulcus aorta. Now, the third surface is called the diaphragmatic surface which forms the base of the lung. Okay. And it bears a diaphragmatic impression, which is more deep in case of right lung. Why? Because of presence of liver. Okay. On the other side of the diaphragm in the abdominal cavity. Okay. So due to presence of liver on the right side, the diaphragmatic impression is much more deep in case of right lung. Okay. And the base has two borders actually a basal border and a mediastinal border we are going to talk about it in borders so borders of lung so there were three surfaces now borders there are four okay we have dorsal border ventral border basal border and mediastinal border so this is our lung okay we are seeing it from the caudal side Okay, this is 3D, right? Uh, so the costal surface and the mediastinal surface meet dorsally at the dorsal border. Okay, and the dorsal border is long, thick, rounded, and it is related to the proximal end of ribs, while the ventral border is formed by the union of mediastinal and costal surfaces ventrally. Okay, it is thin, short, and it presents a cardiac notch this is important cardiac notch and in case of left lung the cardiac notch is bigger okay so it extends from the level of third rib to the level of sixth rib in case of left lung it is larger while in right lung it is uh, it extends from third rib to the fourth rib and it is smaller okay so you can see here that this is the dorsal border and you can see it has uh, this wavy kind of structure because it is related to the proximal end of the ribs. Okay, while ventral border, it is not uniform. Uh, it is thin, 
as compared to the dorsal border and it has a cardiac notch. This thing right here is called the cardiac notch. Okay. So these were the two borders, dorsal and ventral. Now there are two more borders. Okay. When the mediastinal border, uh, mediastinal surface, sorry, mediastinal surface and the diaphragmatic surface meet here, they form the mediastinal border. Okay. And uh, the costal surface and the diaphragmatic surface, when they meet, they form the basal border. Okay. So you can say that the base of lung is um, surrounded by two borders. Okay. It has two borders, a basal border and a mediastinal border. And the basal border fits into the phrenico-costal recess. So this is a lung, thoracic cavity and the diaphragm okay so due to the curvature of the diaphragm between the diaphragm and the thoracic cavity we have a triangular space and this basal border this basal border right here will fit into this recess okay which is called a phrenico costal recess now there's also another structure called apex Apex is a prismatic, narrow, transversely flattened part of lung placed within the cupula pleurae of the pleura. It is much larger in case of right, right lung in ox than left lung. Okay, uh, This piece of information is true for ox specifically. Okay, So apex is basically the cranial end of the lung. This thing right here. Now let us talk about lobes. So there's two um, ways of naming the lobes. I'm going to talk about them one here. So in case of right lung, there are four lobes. And in case of left lung, there are three lobes in case of ox. Okay. So the names and the data that I've written here is for ox. So we have apical lobe, cardiac lobe, diaphragmatic lobe and accessory lobe in right lung. While in left lung, we have apical lobe, cardiac lobe and diaphragmatic lobe. So accessory lobe is absent in case of left lung. How to remember it? It is very simple. Just remember this line. Left is less. Okay, it is also, it holds true for liver as well, actually. So L is common in left and less. So that is why left is less. Okay, that is how uh, you can remember it if you want. So... Let us talk about each lobe. Apical lobe is the cranial most lobe. In case of ox, it is partially divided into cranial and caudal part. Okay. And it is ventilated by apical bronchus. Now, this point is very important. Apical bronchus. Okay. So, this is our trachea. At the tracheal bifurcation, it will divide into the principal bronchio, uh, bronchi. But in case of ruminants and in case of pig, at the level of 13th rib, a tracheal bronchi, or we can also call it an apical bronchi, will come off from the trachea itself and it will ventilate the apical lobe. Okay. This is, uh, is important. Another point that is important for species differentiation is that in case of ox, the apical lobe is divided into cranial and caudal part that I've stated here. But in case of pig, it is undivided. Okay. So see, this lung is lung. Uh, this is the diagram of lungs of ox. And you can see that the apical lobe of the right side is divided into cranial and caudal part. Right cranial lobe, cranial part. Right cranial lobe, caudal part. Okay. And in case of pig, you can see that there is no uh, distinction. This is the apical lobe and this is the cardiac lobe. The apical lobe is not uh, divided into cranial and caudal part. And this information is only for the right lung. Okay, in case of left lung, in both ox and pig, they are undivided. Okay, so only the right apical lobe is divided into cranial and caudal part in ox. The cardiac lobe is uh, present along with the apical lobe. Okay, just caudal to the apical lobe. That is why we also call it middle lobe. And it forms the cardiac impression together with the apical lobe. Diaphragmatic lobe is the largest lobe and it is placed caudalmost. Okay. 
The fourth one, that is the difference between the right and left lung, it is called the accessory uh, lobe or the intermediate lobe or mediastinal lobe. And it is placed caudal to the hilus and fits into the mediastinal recess. Okay. Now we'll come to species differentiation. So what is the difference between lungs of ox, dog, horse and ox? So a few points that I've already discussed here for ox and pig. Okay, in ox, apical lobe is divided into cranial and caudal part, while in case of pig, it is undivided. Uh, in both ox and pig, the apical lobe is ventilated by an apical bronchus, which is not true for horse and dog. Okay, there are two points. But when we talk about species differentiation, the main basis of differentiation is degree of lobation and degree of lobulation okay so number of lobes and how well demarcated they are and how much lobulation you can see okay so remember that pigs have a high lobation high lobulation okay pigs will have high for both ox will also have high lobation and high lobulation in case of horse both are low low lobation and low lobulation while in case of dog Lobation is high while lob uh, lobulation is absent. Okay, so let's talk about them one by one. So this is the diagram of lungs of cat on the left side and dog on the right side. Okay, so see, you can easily differentiate between the different lobes, right? This is the apical lobe right here behind all the. So this is what we call high degree of lobation. Okay, but the lung appear very smooth, right? Both these lungs actually, they appear very smooth. There is no lobulation, there is no uh, bumps or bubbliness. That is what we call absence of lobulation. But see, in case of pig, lobation is definitely high because we can very well appreciate the division of lobes, right? But we can also see this bubbliness or these bumps or these lobules right here okay and this is what we call high degree of lobulation okay then in case of ox we have already said that it is similar to pig the only difference is in right apical lobe where in ox it is differentiated and in pig it is not differentiated then in horse you can say, uh, you can see that lobation is less because mm, this uh, lung overall appears very smooth. There is no clear cut demarcation between the various lobes. And it, as I said, it is smooth, so there is no lobulation. Okay. And in this picture, you can see the tracheal bronchus. This is the lung of pig. And you can see that tracheal bronchus is ventilating the cranial lobe or the caudal lobe and this is actually the second naming convention that was uh, I was talking about so there are two naming convention first what we have seen okay apical cardiac diaphragmatic and accessory the second naming convention is cranial caudal middle and accessory okay so as per that we'll say that this is the right cranial lobe middle lobe accessory lobe and the right caudal lobe but there's difference when it comes to number of lobes in the left lung. Okay. And this con uh, naming convention, I said that there are three lobes in left lung, apical, cardiac, diaphragmatic. But here you will see that there's a little bit difference. Yeah. Okay. What we are saying, we have left cranial lobe, cranial part and left cranial lobe, caudal part. Okay. So in this naming convention, well, uh, when we say cranial and caudal, there are only two lobes on the left lung and four lobes for the right lung. Okay, so right is same. The only discrepancy is in left lung. Okay, so you can say that left lung has two lobes, cranial and caudal, and then the cranial is, uh, lobe is further divided into cranial part and caudal part. Okay, and this thing holds true for all these species. Okay. Now, lastly, we'll talk about blood supply and nerve supply. The functional but, uh, blood supply is provided by pulmonary artery. So pulmonary artery will transport deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart, right ventricle, 
to the lungs for the purpose of gases exchange oxygenation okay this is the function of lungs that is why we call it functional blood supply nutritional blood supply is provided by bronchial artery so bronchial artery will provide oxygen and nutrients to the lungs okay now supply is provided by pulmonary plexus and pulmonary plexus gets uh, its fibers from two sources the parasympathetic fibers come from vagus cranial nerve 10 while the sympathetic fiber uh, fibers come from medial and caudal cervical ganglia okay so this is it for lungs of ox dog horse and pig just a quick revision we gave the general description then we talked about the surfaces there are four surfaces sorry three surfaces costal mediastinal and diaphragmatic diaphragmatic surface forms the base Apex is the cranial most part formed by the apical lobe. Then there are four borders, dorsal, ventral, mediastinal and basal border. There, uh, the lungs are divided into lobes by fissures. Okay. And less, left is less. So left will have less number of lobes. Okay. What are the naming conventions? Apical, cardiac, diaphragmatic accessory present in right. And in left, we have apical, cardiac and diaphragmatic. The second school of thought says that right has cranial lobe, caudal lobe, middle lobe and accessory lobe while the left lung only has cranial and caudal lobe. Okay. You can use whatever convention you want. Then species differentiation is based on degree of lobation and lobulation. Blood supply, functional and nutritional. There are two blood supplies, functional by pulmonary artery, nutritional by bronchial artery. Now supply provided by pulmonary plexus. It itself gets fibers from two sources. Parasympathetic fiber from vagus. Sympathetic fibers from medial and caudal cervical ganglia. Okay. So this is it for this video. If you liked it, found it useful, then hit the like button. Share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, thank you.